the New Year's resolutions that you made a year ago in January. What, what did you resolve? 62% of all Americans make some kind of red New Year's resolution. What are the top ones? Well, here are the top resolutions that they make. First, some say, I want to lose more weight. Others say, you know, I really want to be more organized. Others say, I would very much like to exercise more. That's my journey. Others say, I want to eat more healthy, or I want to spend more time with my family, or I want to be more economical. Some even say I want to relax more. Do you know how many people actually keep the New Year's resolutions that they've made? 8%. I wonder why. Why is it that 62% of the people make New Year's resolutions and only 8% of the people keep them? What biblical principles can I share with you today that will enable you to face the new year with joy, with happiness, and provide you with the motivation and the strength to make changes in your life. First, I don't recommend that people sit down and make a list of New Year's resolutions. I think there's a far better way. The first principle that we find is this. Seek to know what God's way is for your life. Psalm 25, verse 4 and verse 5. Before you simply sit down and start making a list of all the things you want to do or the things you don't want to do, like losing weight, etc., first seek what God wants for your life. I love David's prayer in Psalm 25. David prays, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and on you I'll wait all day. So David says, Lord, show me your path. See, what is God's will for your life? What's God's desire for your life? What's God's plan for your life? Show me your ways, O oh Lord. You see, often we stand at life and we say, these are the changes I want to make in my life. And we try to make those changes. Let me give you an example of that. Many years ago, when I was new in ministry, I participated with my senior pastor in conducting programs to help people quit smoking. In those days, we dealt with the anatomy and physiology of smoking. We dealt with the dangers of cigarette smoking, but we were not really probing the spiritual depths. People came to our plans, and we boasted that 84% of the people coming in those five days quit smoking. When follow-up studies were done, we were devastated. It was only 22%, 23% that stayed off. The people who had stronger wills could stay off. The people who didn't have strong wills, uh, they were too weak without God's power. So when we pray, show me thy ways, O Lord, what we're saying is, Lord, reveal to me things in my life that are not in harmony with your will. Cigarette smoking, alcohol, for example, uh, an, an, a, a poor diet, um, lack of exercise, a poor devotional life. Show me those things by your spirit. And then what does David say? Show me your ways, O Lord. Psalm 25, verse 4, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. In other words, then he says, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day long. In other words, the thing we failed on early on to help people off smoking was we may have talked about the anatomy and physiology of it. We may have talked about the harmful effects of it. But we did not provide people the power to quit, and the power to quit comes from the living God. Now, when I'm helping people quit smoking, I talk about anatomy. I talk about physiology, but I talk about the power of God, of seeking God, of praying that they'll know God's way and of quoting the Bible to them where God says, where David says, you are the God of my salvation. 
So here are four principles to make change in your life for the new year. Principle number one, seek to know God's will for your life and open your heart to receive God's power. Secondly, determine in your life to do nothing that does not please God. Remember what it says in John chapter 8, verse 29. Here is a promise for the new year. John 8, verse 29. He who sent me is with me. This is Jesus' prayer. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. Jesus says, the goal of my life is to please the Father. And the Father's not left me alone. He will give me the strength. So the Holy Spirit will convict you of what God wants, the changes God wants you to make in the new year. The Holy Spirit will speak to your heart as he does, as you quietly meditate and take that first step and pray, oh God, show me thy ways. As you do that, the Spirit of God will bring conviction. As he does, open your heart and take that second step and say, Lord, I want to do nothing in my life that doesn't, uh, uh, except those things that please you. I don't want to do one thing that doesn't please you. Now, sometimes that decision is not an easy decision. You recall that Jesus, in Matthew 26, was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Before Christ was the Roman whip that would lacerate his back and tear it to shreds. Before Christ was the farce of the trial with Pilate. Before Christ were the nails in his hands, the blood that would run down his face, the crown of thorns that would be jammed upon his head. Peter would deny him. Judas would betray him. The disciples would forsake him. And the people that he came to save would not receive him. They would cry, crucify him, crucify him. So Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. All of this is before him. And Jesus prays three times, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. If it is possible, let this cup, what's the cup? The cross. What is the cup? The betrayal, the denial, the rejection, the nails. But let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. The Father gave Christ the strength to go through the trial of the cross because Jesus' desire was to please the Father. Jesus' desire was not to do anything that was out of harmony with God's will. He said, if possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, Lord, all I want is your will. What do you desire in your life? We face the new year. You can face the new year with courage. You can face the new year with hope. You can face the new year with confidence. First, by spending time this New Year's Eve, not in some raucous party with wild music playing and alcohol flowing. You can spend this New Year's Eve sometime meditating, saying to God, show me your ways, grant me your power. Secondly, you can say, God, I determine in my life to do nothing except that which pleases you. Lord, I don't want to displease you. Here's the third step. Believe that God will do a new thing in your life this year. By faith, grasp the promises of God. By faith, believe that God's going to do something in your life that's remarkable, that's amazing. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Don't miss this one. Isaiah 43, verse 19. God's going to do a new thing in your marriage. God's going to do a new thing in your health. God's going to do a new thing in your finances. God's going to do a new thing in your relationship with others. God's going to do a new thing in your spiritual journey. If you let him, God will do a new thing in your life. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He says, in the desert of your life, when, when, 
when, it's, when you're thirsty for spiritual things and thirsty for God, I'm going to do a new thing for you this year. When you desire health and you're in the desert of your life, God says, commit your body to me. Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto me, which is your reasonable service. Present your body to God and let him do a new thing Determine in your life that you want to please him in everything you eat and drink in your lifestyle practices. Determine in your life and your relationships that you want to minister love to your husband, your wife, your kids. Let's pray to God, say, God, do a new thing with my son. Do a new thing with my daughter. Do a new thing in my relationships and believe that God is going to do it. Believe that God's word is true. Take this promise out. Now, behold, I'll do a new thing. Verse 19, and it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll make a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Rivers in the desert, that's a miracle. A road through the wilderness, that's a miracle. But God says, I am the miracle working God. The God that rained manna down from heaven and fed Israel in the wilderness can provide your needs. The God that opened the Red Sea so Israel could go through and the Egyptians were drowned, that God can open the sea of problems, the sea of difficulty, the sea of challenges in your life. The God that told Israel, march around Jericho seven times and the walls fall down. The walls did fall down. God can call the walls, the barriers between you and others to fall down. The God that said in Philippians 4, verse 19, my God shall supply all your need, spoke to Paul. God can supply your financial needs as well. God's going to do a new thing in your life. Dedicate your life to him. Seek to do only his ways. Determine to please him and grasp by faith his promises that he will do a new thing for you. Lastly, discover God's blessings for you every morning on that day. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, I read this. Lamentations, chapter 3. The scripture says in Lamentations chapter 3, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. Verse 22, behold, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. God's mercies are new. They are new every morning. Every morning, kneel before him. Every morning, open your heart to him. Before you get out of bed, say, God, today, I'm anticipating this day. Today, this is going to be an exciting day. Today, this is going to be a day of new opportunities. Lord, your mercies are new every morning. My wish for you is that you enter the new year meditating on God's goodness and greatness. That you enter the new year seeking for God to teach you his way. That you enter the new year with a heart that desires to please God. That you enter the new year believing by faith that God's going to do a new thing in your life. And that every day you open your heart to receive the marvelous blessings of God that he has for you that day because his mercies, his blessings are new every morning. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that your blessings are new every morning. We thank you that we can come to you believing that you'll do a new thing in our lives. Father, the past year is behind us. We can't do anything about it. It's gone. It's behind us. Forgive us for we have failed. Pardon our iniquities and sins. But as we start the new year, we start with a clean slate. The days are before us. The weeks are before us. The months are before us. Lord, we're praying that we would sense that your mercies are new every morning, and that you do a new thing in our lives, and we believe that by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.